major workflow in Security Onion, Detection Engineering. Unlike the last two videos, in this case we're not looking for malicious or suspicious events that have already occurred. Instead, we're writing alerting rules to catch those events and let our analysts know when they happen so they can investigate. We're going to talk a little bit about the detection engineering process, then demonstrate the new detections module that we recently introduced in Security Onion. Finally, we'll walk through creating an alerting rule using the Sigma detection meta language. Let's get started. The first step in this process is identifying a detection gap. That is, there's a potential blind spot in your defenses where malicious activity could occur and you would not be alerted to it. These gaps can be identified in a lot of different ways. Sometimes it's the output from a purple teaming process, where you actively test your defenses to see what is and is not detected. Sometimes it may be a post-mortem after an incident, where you find traces of the early steps in the attack chain that you didn't identify at the time. It may be something that you realize when reading a threat intelligence report, that there's an attack vector somewhere on your network that you're not properly monitoring. In any case, identifying this gap is the first step. The next step is configuring your detection pipeline and determining what data you need to get into Security Onion in order to alert on it. This might require deploying a new sensor, ingesting a new class of logs, or updating an Elastic Agent policy to watch something new on a server. The key here is that we're trying to get visibility into the data that will close this detection gap. Sometimes this is a simple process, something like updating the configuration on your TAP infrastructure to make another network segment visible to Security Onion. Sometimes it's more complex, reaching out to the cloud team to find out what sort of logging we have in place in AWS and getting access to it with a service account. But this is a critical part of the process. Without the necessary visibility into your infrastructure, you're not going to be able to detect the indicators you're looking for. Once that pipeline is resolved and the logs are being imported and parsed as we want, we need to write and test our detection to ensure that it alerts as expected. Finally, we will deploy the detection into production, where it will almost certainly need to be iteratively tuned and maintained over time. Are there false positives? Worse, are there false negatives? The goal, as always, is to write detections that only alert on legitimate events so that we don't overwhelm and burn out the analysts who are reviewing them. With this process in mind, let's switch our attention over to the Security Onion console and we'll take a look at the detections tool that will enable this process for us. As always, we log in with the username and password that we established during installation. You'll notice that there's a tool on the left-hand side of the screen here called Detections. That's the one that we'll be working in today. Those of you who used older versions of the platform may remember a module we called Playbook. That functionality, along with that of some other pieces that were previously dispersed in different places, is now contained in the Detections tool. You'll notice that the user interface for Detections is very similar to the one for Alerts, Hunt, and other SOC tools. There's an Options dropdown at the top of the window with some advanced settings in it, and then a Query bar here in the upper left. By default, the initial query in Detections is to show all of the rules grouped together by the detection language. Security Onion supports three different detection languages, which support three different use cases. They're listed here in the upper left table in the detection screen. The first, Suricata, covers rules for the network intrusion detection system that's built into Security Onion. That is, these are signatures that are matched against live network traffic as it is evaluated by a Security Onion monitoring port. These rules are tuned to look for particular IPs, ports, traffic patterns, and other elements that you might expect to see in a packet capture. So, for example, if you wanted to write a rule that alerted every time you saw a network flow containing the word onion on port 8080, a Suricata rule would be a good choice for filling that detection gap. The second rule language supported by the platform is Yara, which is intended to be used to detect malicious files. By default, Security Onion carves certain files out of plain text network traffic, things like Windows executables, MS Office documents, and PDFs among them. The Strelka module is then used in conjunction with these Yara rules to check these files for signs of potential malice or infection. For example, is an executable built with a library that's commonly used for malware? Or does an Office document have macro functionality enabled that could execute on the user's endpoint? It might be easiest to think of Yara as a very powerful string matching library, 
where rules can be written to look for particular strings or patterns in files and raise an alert if they are found. So if your detection gap was something like, I want an alert whenever an executable signed with a particular key is seen on my network, Yara would be a good fit for that. Finally, the Sigma language is designed to look for indicators of compromise in the log files that are collected by Security Onion. When a Sigma rule is enabled, it generates an elastic query language query string that is then run against our collected logs every few minutes, with an alert being raised when there's a match to the query. This is a very powerful capability that can turn nearly any log that you're collecting into a potential source of high fidelity alerts, as well as enabling things like honey creds or honey tokens to be easily deployed in your environment. As with hunt, alerts, and other tools, these tables are fully interactive and can be used to modify the query in the query bar. For example, if you want to see only the Sigma rules in the environment, you can click on Sigma and then include, and it will add that clause to the query and remove the Suricata and Yara rules from view. You'll see that not only are the detections listed below updated when we do that, but so is the table in the upper right listing how many rules are enabled. The majority of the Sigma rules that are bundled with security and in are disabled by default. As I mentioned earlier, each rule that's enabled is going to kick off an Elasticsearch query every few minutes. So just turning everything on can put a lot of load on your grid and can lead to performance issues. It's best to be judicious in deciding which alerts will actually be helpful in your environment. If we want to get a closer look at a rule, we can click on this binocular icon next to the rule name. This will open a tuning interface for this specific rule, initially showing the Overview tab. This tab lists the rule's summary, any included references for more information, and the detection logic itself. In this case, we're looking for any sort of web server post query that contains these particular attributes. If any of these are present, it's a sign that this might be a Zimbra collaboration suite unauthenticated RCE attempt, and it should raise an alert. Along the right-hand side of the window here, we see some more details about the rule. It's public ID, which is a UUID used internally to track it, along with the rule type, what rule set it's a part of, the severity, the author, the license, and when it was last created and updated. At the top, there's a slider switch. This is currently set to disabled. If we want to turn this rule on, that is, if we have Zimbra in our environment and we want to start alerting on these particular events, we can click that to enable it. Looking at the tabs across the top of the screen, Operational Notes provides a spot for analysts to put their notes about this rule, any tuning they've done to it, and its efficacy in the environment. Detection Source shows the full text of the Sigma rule, including items that are omitted from the overview page, like potential false positives and the attack technique numbers that are covered by this rule. Tuning provides a language-specific interface for tuning the tool to your environment. Suricata rules, for example, can be suppressed or thresholded here while Sigma rules can have Sigma filters applied. See our documentation for more details. Finally, History provides an audit trail of changes that have been made to this rule since it was initially imported into this Security Onion instance. Now that we've looked at the tool a little bit, let's consider a detection engineering scenario. You've identified a detection gap in your environment. You would like to be alerted whenever a local account is created on a Windows endpoint. Since you're working in an Active Directory environment, the enterprise standard says that all new accounts should be created there, in AD. A local account is a sign of either someone breaking that standard, a piece of misconfigured software, or more worryingly, maybe a sign of an intruder attempting to establish persistence. In any case, it's something that you would like to alert on. Now, for purposes of this demonstration, we'll assume that you're already collecting Windows event logs from your endpoints using the Elastic Agent and ingesting them into Security Onion. The methods for setting this up are outside the scope of this particular video, but there is much more information available on this in our documentation and on our YouTube channel. A bit of research determines that event ID 4720 is generated on a Windows endpoint when a local account is created. So that's the indicator that we want to alert on. Now how to do it? The first step is to click on this plus sign to add a new rule to our configuration. Now we need to select what language to write the detection in. Since we're looking for something that would be in a log file, not an artifact in live network traffic or in a file structure, 
We want to write a sigma rule, so let's select that from the dropdown. I'm going to set the license to none, but obviously this will depend on your own organization and how you license or classify your internally generated detection rules. Now, you'll notice that there's an example sigma rule template already in the box. This shows you all of the fields that can be used to define this detection rule. I would especially like to point out these URLs at the top of the template for the sigma rule creation guide and the log sources. Those are essential reading if you want to write efficient, effective sigma detection rules. To save you from listening to me type this out, I'm going to paste in a sigma rule that alerts on event ID 4720, and then we'll talk through it from top to bottom. The first items, as you can see, are metadata about the rule itself. Things like the title, the description, and the references. I implore you, please fill these out completely as a favor to your future self and any other colleagues who may have to investigate this alert. Remember, we are writing these rules to detect potentially malicious activity that may occur months or years in the future. You're going to be profoundly frustrated if you get an alert for test rule with no description popping up in 18 months when you've completely forgotten what it was supposed to mean. In this case, the references is just a link to the Microsoft documentation for this event ID. But that's not the only thing you can put here. If you have a link to a standard procedure or playbook that would be useful to the analyst handling this alert in the future, put that in here as well. Again, the goal of this metadata is to make sure that some future analyst has all of the context and information that they need to handle this alert when it shows up months or years from now. The next item here is the tags, which match up with the attack matrix taxonomy for a local account creation event. MITRE classifies this as a persistence tactic and assigns creation of a local account the technique number 1136.001. We'll record those here so we can track which techniques we have detective controls for in our environment. After this comes the log source. Per the log source documentation URL that I pointed out earlier, this designates that we are looking for events in the Windows Security Event Log. It's important to have the proper log source set so that only the appropriate logs for a rule are searched for potential indicators. This will cut down on both false positives and also unnecessary load on the Elasticsearch backend. Finally, the detection logic itself is very simple for this rule. If there's an event with the event ID 4720, that's the condition, raise an alert. The Sigma language does support more complex detection and alerting logic than that with multiple clauses and logical operators. Check the documentation for details. And then here at the end is the severity level of the alert. It's set to high by default, but that can be tweaked if necessary. Now, you may recall that earlier I referred to Sigma as a meta language, and the reason for that is simple. The actual detection query is not contained within this Sigma rule. Rather, it's converted into EQL, or Elastic Query Language, and that is the query that's actually run against the Elasticsearch database. To see what the actual query will be, we can click on this Convert button at the bottom of the screen, and it will show up in this pop-up. To test it directly in the environment, we can click on Test in Kibana and it will open the query in Kibana DevTools and show you any matching records. As you can see, the query is here on the left side, and when we click the Play button, the matching event will show up over here on the right. Even if you're not going to directly test the query, it's good to do this conversion step just to make sure that everything looks all right. Especially with more complicated nested detection conditions, it's sometimes easy to mistype an operator and end up with a query that doesn't match what you intended. Everything looks okay here, so we can click the Create button and it will add this Sigma rule to our detections library. It's not enabled by default, but if we want to turn it on, it's just a matter of flipping this slider switch. Now we'll receive an alert anytime there's a log with event ID 4720. Now we can test the rule. I'm going to pause the recording for a moment to import an EVTX file with a 4720 event in it. Then we can check the alerts page and make sure it shows up as expected. And there it is. If this were a production environment, we'd want to test this more thoroughly. An option might be to create a local account on some Windows endpoint and verify that the alert fires as expected. And if it doesn't, we can start working backwards. Does that EQL query return any results? Is our Windows endpoint generating the proper logs? Is there an audit setting that needs to be configured? Is my event collection picking up everything that it's supposed to and shipping it all to Security Onion? Once the rule is confirmed to be functional, 
We watch for false positives and tuning opportunities in the future. Are there particular hosts where local accounts are created as part of a sanctioned business process? We can tune the rule to exclude those so that our analysts aren't wasting their time investigating known good events. For more information on tuning your Sigma rules, as well as adding other rule packages or repositories, see our documentation at securityonion.com docs. I hope this video was helpful for you to understand the detection engineering process and how it applies to Security Onion. Again, you start with a detection gap, figure out what logs or events you need to ingest in order to close that gap, write an appropriate rule in one of the supported rule languages and detections, then deploy, test, and tune. If you're having trouble with rule syntax or anything else in the process, please check out our documentation or feel free to start a fresh thread on our community discussion forum at securityonion.com discuss. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.